Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Coach Ani, the podcast. Super excited to have you guys here. I know. I know I have not been consistent. I'm doing my best, trying my best. And sometimes that's all that I can really offer you. Um, so maybe let's do like a quick update. What the hell has been going on? Officially have a new salon, moved into a way bigger suite. Um, I'm actually back at Laguna Beach. I'm so excited. I love, I love, I love Laguna Beach. So really happy about that. Um, I am working on a project that I can't tell anybody about. Um, what I can tell you is I have never been more scared in my life. I have never been more stressed out in my life to the point where I literally told my therapist, I was like, I'm shitting my pants and I'm going to have brown stains in my underwear for the next like year until this project is done. We basically had to stop my therapy for a little bit because she was just like laughing at me, which is fine. I actually really respect that. I love my therapist. Um, So that is something I cannot wait to tell you guys about. You will find out within probably the next like two, two and a half months. Um, But I'm freaking out. And I want to tell you guys, uh, it's okay to be completely scared and doing something. I'm reading this book called The Artist's Way. And something that it says in there is leap and the net will appear. Leap and the net will appear. And I feel like that's something that I've really taken to heart recently. Um, because I just keep doing things that scare the utmost shit out of me. But I just, you know, like when deep in your soul, you know it's the right thing to do. I just like know it's the right thing to do. So... What I want to talk about today, well, I feel like, look, being a boss <laughs> is um, not really for the faint of heart. Um, it requires a lot out of you. It requires, I'll say number one, I feel like is honesty, which is the ability to not only be honest with your staff and your team members, but also be honest with yourself inside of your own shortcomings and where you could be better and where it's not just where potentially like, you know, staff failed you, but where you actually failed them as well. So what I actually want to talk about is things that I do um, as a boss. I have a protege inside of the salon. Her name is Jasmine, baby J. J. she is a sweet, precious nugget of a delight. Like I love, love, love her. And then I actually have an admin inside of my consulting business and he does uh a lot (laughs) he does a lot of things we're still currently like the onboarding to get him used to everything he's not in the hair world but working towards um a a very large actually i can say it wait when this comes out i'll be able to say this wait a minute um so i actually hired on my brother as my admin which some people might be like oh my god you don't mix business and family shut up i fucking do when I was really thinking about what I needed help with, and number one, it was a lot of tech work. Um, I'm not sure I know anybody who's better at technology than my older brother. So that was the first thing. And then I really had to sit and think for a minute. And I'm like, okay, um, I need to be able to trust this person. They're going to be all up in my business, all up in my mother freaking business. And I don't generally like that it had to be someone that I inherently trusted with my heart and soul and I'm very 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 close with my family so my brother is actually running admin for kind of actually all of my companies um my consulting he does things for the salon and he will uh eventually teeter into this third uh, third company that I'm currently starting so very cool very exciting but With that, I realized that I feel like there are some things that I don't want to say I potentially do a little bit different, but I feel like I maybe don't actually follow the norm of what most bosses do, um, number one, because I have had a lot of bosses in my day, um, a lot, and some were okay, some were heinous, some were okay, and some were great. Like, it's kind of, span. like, it's run the span of there's never just been one where I'm like, oh, my bosses were wonderful. No, I I can't say that. But I actually am so grateful that I've worked for wonderful people and horrendous people because it really taught me a lot. And I I learned things that I love and I wanted to implement. And I learned things that I would never in a million years treat someone like this. Like, that's just kind of how it is. So I kind of want to talk about that um, and things of things that work for myself and my staff 
And maybe that will eventually mean something to you. So I'm going to talk about one that honestly, I feel, so I have to like crack my neck. I feel like this statement triggers the fuck out of me. I don't know why. I do know why. And I feel like I'm just going to have to address it. Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Work-life balance. You want to know why this triggers me to death? Because first off, everybody says it. Everybody says like, oh my God, I want to have work-life balance. I want my staff to have work-life balance. And then when it comes down to it, you treat your staff like shit. You have unrealistic expectations and you never give them any fucking time off or you demand answers at the most unrealistic times in the day or when they have fucking days off. So I want to talk about what this actually looks like and rules that I've implemented and things that honestly, Jasmine, my protege doesn't even know about, but here's what I like to do. So number one, I will say um, rules on answering me. Uh, she, I have been very honest with her. She knows I have ADHD or she, and she knows I'm autistic. So I've been very upfront with her. Like, Hey, I'm up very early. I'm generally actually up pretty late. My mind works at weird hours. I will always do my best to never text you in off hours. If I do ignore me, literally don't answer me. There is no guilt. Your job is never in jeopardy. If for some reason it's an emergency, all straight up be like, yeah. Yo, like, this is an emergency. I need an answer right now. But I can't imagine something like that would come up that I can't personally handle. So although that sounds so stupid, like, oh, my God, duh, your staff doesn't need to text you back on off hours. Okay, yeah. Have you, are you telling me that you've never worked for someone that, frankly, all they do is work? And so they have absolutely no freaking respect for the fact that work isn't your life? Uh, I have. Even down to getting messages at 4.30 in the morning and being expected to respond. Like that is not healthy. That's not okay. So that is one thing that I made very clear with her. And I'll say, honestly, she still answers. She's kind of up late. She's up pretty early. But like I told her very clearly, your job will never be in jeopardy. Never be in jeopardy for not answering me when we're not at work. Like, I don't expect her to be on. Now, if it's a day where we're, neither one of us are in the salon because I also have consulting and she's not doing anything for me that day, if I text you middle of the day, like, I don't know, text me back at some point, but she's not indebted to me, nor does she owe me anything to demand a response right then and there. Now, I'll also say, um, she is absolutely allowed to say no to me. Anybody on my team is allowed to say no to me. Like, literally, at any way, shape, point, or time, if I'm asking you something or to do something or asking you if you have time or capacity or frankly, even the want to do something, you're allowed to say no. I'll give you a couple of examples of how this looks like on both admin side and I'll say my, my assistant, my protege. Um, for example, we obviously just do some lots. We baby J, we moved, we have a bigger suite, we got two chairs. She's taking her own models, thriving. I'm so proud of her. And in it, I was like, fuck, girl, we have a client Friday evening. Like, we're done about, like, 630. And then we have a client Tuesday morning. I'm like, I really, like, want to move this week. And so I asked her, I'm like, hey, I didn't start with, can you help me? I was like, hey, oh, do you have plans this week? And she's like, nope, just hanging out. I'm like, well, if by chance Saturday you're not busy, would you maybe mind helping me for a few hours, like, to move the salon? And she was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. And I was, I felt really guilty asking her that. I'm like, are you sure? Because like, I know it's you and your husband's weekend. Like, I, I don't want to intrude or overstep into personal time. I know how that feels. And she was like, actually, her husband's a barber, which I think is so freaking cool. But she's like, actually, we don't take Saturdays off together because the world is too busy and we don't like that. She's like, we, um, we do Sundays and Mondays. And when I heard that, I was like, okay. Sundays and Mondays are her and her husband's day. So in my mind, I'm now already kind of like clocking, like leave her alone on Sundays and Mondays. And I'll say my schedule with the salon, I've been told so many times, like, you need to create a set schedule. You need to, I don't really need to. I don't necessarily want to. And because it works for me. It works for me to have an open availability for my clients to let them kind of go where it suits best. But now I also have in my mind 
I don't want to book clients on a Monday. It'll happen occasionally. I actually think I just did it today, but in my defense, it was her birthday the next day. So like, you know, so I, um, so I, I am, although she works for me, I am trying to be very considerate of her time as well and know that her husband always has Sunday, Monday off and he works very, very freaking hard. He's in the same industry. I get it. I want to be respectful of that time. Now, let's look at my admin, for example. Um, I text him and here's the deal. If it's family shit, I will pester my older brother and be like, ding, 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 answer me, answer me, answer me, answer me. If it's work shit, I would never do that. We know that there's a distinction. And I had texted him or he had asked me um, a question or something. I had asked him a question on like a Saturday and I was like, oh, hey, like, please don't answer now. Like, this is not important, blah, 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 this and that. But when you're on next, can you do X, Y, Z? And he was like, oh, yeah, totally. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm like, but not now. I don't want you to work now. And he straight up was like, yeah, I wasn't going to do it now. I was like, ah! <laughs> some people might be like, wow, you'd have to say it. I was like, good for you. Yeah, secret to the million. I'm just kidding. I think like I'm the man here. But he was like, yeah, he's like, nope. He's like, I focus on work things during this day, this time, da, da, da. And I was like, hell yeah. Thank you for letting me know like the hours that you keep, which I'm sure you're also kind of like, but wait, the hours that he keeps, like, well, why, why does that matter? So my brother and his wife are expecting their first baby. I am so excited. I am officially a godmother. Um, I don't know if they're announcing the sex yet, so I won't say. But the point is, I'm a godmother. I have a little niece or nephew coming in. This is insane. We have no cousins. So the youngest kid in my family is my little brother at 27 years old. And so with that, um, the goal, the plan is um, I'm actually stealing him away from his job. <laughs> I basically said like, hey, if I match your salary, um, will you come work for me full time? And he was like, yeah. So we worked out a few things. And one thing that I told him, because um, basically when the baby comes, like he gets to be a stay at home dad. Like, he's still going to be working, but he's going to be working from home. The little nug doesn't have to go to daycare. Like, this is rad, you know? And so when him and I were talking about this, something else that I decided to implement inside of, this will most likely go for anybody who ends up a salary on my team. I do not expect a minimum hours. I know most people are like, you get X salary, minimum 40 hours a week. I don't like that. Um, that comes birth from I'm someone who works very quickly. I get a lot of shit done in a very fast amount of time. And frankly, I don't think I should be punished for that. Like, why should you have to load up my plate with more and more and more work because I work fast? Should I not be commended for that? So that is something that I also decided. Um, my admin will be salary and there are no minimum hours. We'll probably have... Uh, I don't want to say a couple meetings a week. We'll have a meeting probably at the beginning of the week and being like, cool, here are the goals for the week. Here's what needs to be done, da 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 If it takes him 20 hours to get it done, cool. He's still, like, he still gets the full full salary. Vacation, there's no limit to the amount of vacations he can take. As long as the shit gets done and you want to take a month off work, but everything's done, I don't actually care. I don't care because I know how it feels to feel like you're busting your dick man and working so fucking hard and you never get any time off and then the harder you work and the more you get done that now becomes the bigger expectation so now you're just expected to always run at that pace regardless of if it's killing you or not that's gross i won't play a game that way so that's something that i'm very excited to do is honestly salary him fuck yeah like great let's do shit and i'm i will say something that has i've had to really learn um because i have adhd and because i'm autistic i'm aware that my communication styles are a little bit different um and i feel like that sound i made was just so gross <laughs> i'm so sorry that's so gross I'm sorry i did it twice but i do feel that communication with my team is also a little bit different. Um, I am very proud to say that I don't know how to do everything and that I'm not good at everything. And I don't, frankly, I don't always have the fucking answer. I sometimes my answer is I literally don't know. 
Um, and sometimes, guys, the day is just it's I call them like low energy days. And I've talked about it before that I don't expect anyone on my team and I'll use Jasmine in particular. I don't expect her to come to work and be bubbly, happy, happy. Oh, my God. How are we doing? Because that's unrealistic. That's not how every day is. We are human beings. And I know what y'all are thinking like, oh, my God, it's a business. Leave your shit at the door. I can leave my shit at the door and still not be bubbly. Sometimes there's a lot of mental drain or emotional drain or you're just a little off kilter and that's okay. So if she ever has to come in and just be like, it's kind of an off day. It's a low energy day. Um, I feel a little bit weird. I'm just going to be quiet today. Great. Thank you for letting me know. Now I know I'm not going to bounce conversations off of you. I'm going to, I don't want to say use her to the minimum amount, but sometimes like, yeah, you do use assistance, like buffer conversations, give you a break. I'm not doing that with her that day. I know like she will be there. She will do her job. She, there's never been a day where she doesn't crush it, but I'm okay with that. Like that to me is understanding that someone is a human being. The work that we do will not be affected. The experience that we do will not be affected. Um, the relationship we have with each other and our clients, that will not be affected. We are humans and we cannot be expected to run like fucking robots. Also, you know something weird she actually did today? <laughs> it's very quiet because we're in the new salon and the new salon, the bathrooms are downstairs. And she was like, do you, is it okay if I go to the bathroom? I was like, are you? Did you just ask me to go to the bathroom? She's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, go. You don't need to ask me. And she's like, just to make sure you don't need anything. I'm like, even if I did need something, I can handle myself for five minutes while you go to the bathroom. Like, just go, go to the bathroom for the love of God. So things like that I always think are just kind of really funny, I want to say. So yeah, all these things. Let them say no. Have clear communication. Don't expect them to be robots. And then I'll also say so. I am very, very fortunate inside where I'm at in my career that now, if you don't know me, I love travel. I truly love traveling. I think it's amazing. And I get it. Everybody says, like, oh, my God, I love to travel. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. But I, I genuinely do, like everybody else. And one thing that I've always wanted to do is do traveling education. I love the idea of traveling education and going to different states and different countries, going around the world, teaching people shit and getting to experience different cultures and meet like hair I've learned in America is not like hair is done in Australia it's very different the culture is different within extensions it's actually like blown my freaking mind I had no idea and I kind of the other day realized like I kind of came upon a problem so I'm going to London in October and I'm gone for two weeks um, we have a Luna Method class there. I'm so freaking stoked. It's going to be myself, Ashley, who created Luna, Grayson Kilgore, who um, created Weft Lab. Like, amazing, amazing, amazing. But then I realized I'm gone for two weeks. So Jasmine, my protege, my assistant, she, like, she relies on me for income and I'm gone for two weeks. She didn't ask me for two weeks off. She didn't ask me for any fucking time off. She's got work. She wants she wants to work. So I sat there and I was like, well, shit, what do I do? Like, I genuinely had to sit down and ask myself, what do I do in this situation? Because will we technically be working a little bit more before I leave and a little bit more after? Yeah, but that's still two weeks of no income. So I decided to essentially pay her those two weeks. Um, I'm playing her like a flat rate. It covers... It's a little bit less than what her normal two-week um, pay would be, but it's borderline the same. When they told her, I said, um, you know, I'll be paying you this. The only thing, if you could just actually, like, come watch my dogs for, like, half a day while the normal babysitter gets here, that'd be great. Otherwise, um, I'll kind of just have you on call if I need anything, like, admin-wise or for either of mine and my boyfriend's companies, um, which would just be, like, taking something to the post office. And she was like, yeah. But other than that, she has those two weeks off, and I am paying her. Um, I realize that's not... Some business experts are probably going to tell me that that's not, that's not the smart idea and that's not what you want to do and blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I look at it from a point of view of I appreciate her 
She is always working hard. She is always motherfucking down. She, she is down to do shit. And I respect that. I, I feel like that's how I always was working for other people. Um, so I feel like that should also be rewarded and she shouldn't be punished for me fucking off to London for two weeks. You know what I mean? Even though it is work, like that's still not, that's not her problem. So I feel as though when I, I'll say, and I talked about this before, that the pressure of having people, people working for you and you being their sole source of income is incredibly, it's, it's a heavy weight, but also it's a weight that I'm like so glad to carry because now it really does give me, it gives me a chance to treat people and staff and employees how I always wish I'd been treated as someone's employee. Um, and I think it's a really cool experience. So I just know because, once again, I'm on the spectrum and I'm, I'll just say neurospicy. I love the word neurospicy because I am neurospicy. I do communicate differently at different hours of the day. Um, sometimes I, I'll be honest, sometimes I give instructions and I'm like, that was absolutely not clear. Like, I, I should have done that. I should have done that better. But I'm honest with my team. And I don't mean honest because I think there's a difference in being like just totally upfront and honest and doing almost like the interview shit when people are like, what's your worst quality? Uh, uh, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, well, all right, great. That's I don't mean that kind of like, wow, I just, I'm just such a perfectionist. It's like so hard. Hair flip, hair flip. Like that's not, that's not what I'm talking about, about being honest. Like I've been honest about moments where I'm stressed out, where I'm like, oh my God, especially with this um, upcoming business that I'm starting. Both of them know exactly what is happening. And I'll be real. Both of them know exactly how much it costs. And although, is it Jasmine's business? No. Does she need to know? No, it actually doesn't affect her at all. Actually, the fact that I'm starting another business is going to benefit her a lot because she's going to end up taking on quite a big role and she'll be paid more for it because the more work you do and the more roles you take, you should be paid more for it. I can't even believe that's something I have to say these days. But I did tell her so that if ever I come in one day and I'm like, oh my God, I got a bill today. And I'm throwing up, panicking, screaming, crying, throwing up. I wouldn't, not publicly, but internally. Um, that she just understands why. And I think that also has made her, I don't want to say a very empathetic human. I think she always has been. But I want my staff to know I'm a human being. And like, if you're working with me and you expect me to have every answer, I'm, and like, if you, it, honestly, if that's something you want from a boss that they know every single answer of every single day of every single moment, I'm going to be real with you. Like, I'm, I'm not the boss for you then um, because I don't. Sometimes I truly am flying by the seat of my pants, doing the best that I can, knowing, though, I will never do my staff dirty. I will always continue to hold myself to be highest morals and integrity. I would never ask them to do something that I would not do. Um, I would never pay them in a way that I wouldn't want to be paid because, trust me, I, I've been through it. <laughs> so for all of you out there that are, that you have staff and you have employees, I would just encourage you to sometimes maybe think outside of the box that the way that you pay them or do things doesn't have to be the way that everybody else does it. And I know for me, being neurodivergent has, I feel like, helped me in this sense because I've just been like, I, I can't hide. I can't pretend to be normal. I can't pretend that I and not these things because that fucks with me. So some days it'll be chaotic. Some days it's really, really high energy. Some days it's really low. Some days it's up till midnight. Some days it's up at 4 a.m. Like all of these things, I don't know what it's going to be some days. But what I do know is here are the rules we're all abiding by. You need to, if you want to fuck off for two days and ignore me because it's your time off, do it. But also know me as the boss, I'm making every effort I can to not even text you those days. If I have to make a separate note that says Jasmine or Greg, my admin, and then send it to them later, great. I I will do that. So be considerate. I can't believe I have to say that some days. Being 
being a boss is really hard, especially when you are neurospicy, but you have chance to do a lot of good. And I've said it before, I feel so many times, I'm determined to show that you can build. Someone told me once, I don't know if I've talked this on a podcast or if, honestly it was to my therapist or my friend, but um, someone told me once, you will never become a millionaire. You will never be rich without stepping on someone. And that was one of the grossest things I ever heard. That was one of the most heinous things that someone had ever said to me. And I was, I was taken aback, y'all. I could not believe that that's the mentality. And I was like, okay, that, that I will become a millionaire and I will do it by stepping on no one. And I will do it by being shitty to no one. And I will do it living within my morals and integrity, whether you see it or whether you don't. I talked about this on an Instagram live the other day that I am a little bit fed up of masks. And I don't mean masks in like the autistic way or ADHD way. I mean masks of people putting on this beautiful, pretty mask on the outside and pretending like they love everybody and they treat everybody so well. And then when push comes to shove and it's behind closed doors, they're fucking heinous. Um, I won't be that person. I won't be that boss. I won't be that friend. I won't be that type of entrepreneur. I'm determined to show that number one, regardless of how weird, quirky, or different you are, because I feel you, I'm not the norm, especially for here in California, um, that you always have a place. And I will continue to show that you can be very successful without stepping on someone else. I don't feel that that has to be a requirement. And anyone who says that or the phrase, lead in, put in your time. Oh, uh, those are red flags. I'm just going to say it. If anyone ever looks at you, you're about to go work for someone. They're like, we got to put in your time. You got to bleed in. Run. Run for the hills. It's not going to be good. So with that being said, um, I would love to say that I'm going to be super consistent on these. You know what? I understand. I'm just going to put it out there. We're going to be so consistent now. You guys are going to be sick of my consistency. <laughs> so, so nice. You know what it is? I feel the pressure to have to get dressed and put on makeup to do these podcasts because they're recorded. So do me a favor. If you don't give a fuck whether I am or am not wearing makeup or I'm just in like a fucking band tee and PJ shorts that you can't even see, will you just like let me know? You don't have to comment below because YouTube can be scary sometimes, but you can DM me. If you would rather, if you guys don't care whether I am or I'm not wearing makeup and look cute, if I could just show up as me some days, I, that would make it a lot easier to film these on a very regular basis, like literally every single week. There's so much pressure to show up as like put together. The reason I didn't put together today is because I went to the salon. So of course I did my hair and makeup. So I was like, well, shit, might as well do a podcast today. So <sighs> lice. Am I right? You know? So you're amazing. You're all amazing. If you're the CEO and the boss and you're going through it, it's going to be okay. If you work for someone else and you have these feelings of like, it's not it. And it's okay that it's not it. No one really has to be right or wrong. Sometimes it's just not freaking it. So I cannot wait um, to tell you guys about my project. I'm kind of dying. Dying. I. That's all I can say. <laughs> I literally can't say anything else. I feel like if someone guesses what it is I'm doing, I should give you like a prize. Yeah, DM me. DM me on my Instagram. If you think you know what it is I'm doing, I will figure out a prize to give you. It won't be fucking lame like the Snickers bar, although the Snickers bar sounds good right now. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for being here with me on another episode of Coach Ani the Podcast. If there's, once again, ever any kind of topic that you want to hear about, let me know. Um, I'm always to talk about anything and everything, whether it's spicy, dicey, or like, you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you soon.